everyone, welcome back to JP's Budget Collecting and our weekly look back at the hot comics from six months ago. This week we're looking back at the hot comics from May 27th, 2022. And I'm recording this a little earlier in the week than normal on November 22nd, 2022. Uh, with Thanksgiving and stuff, I wanted to make sure I got this in, so I'm doing this a little bit early. Uh, so if some news comes out, there's a potential this could be already out of date by the time this posts, but uh, I think we're pretty safe. Um, as always, we're looking back at the CBSI Hot Top 10 and the Comic Tom Key Collector Hottest Trending Comics of the Week. Uh, this week, we had 18 books between the two lists. Uh, we look at the two lists because they kind of represent hot books of the moment, books that are news or something that's caused people to chase. Uh, generally, that's what's going on here. So we look at them to see what we can learn about what was hot, what factors made them hot, and how they were affected in the six months since, and whether or not they held value or not, or whether or not you've been better off being patient. Uh, if you've been paying attention, you definitely need to have been patient in 22 uh, and look for deals, but let's see if that held for this week. Uh, so first up, we got We Live number one, uh, and this hit the list because we had rumors that it had been optioned. Uh, this happened a couple different times, I think. Was it long after this? Or maybe this was actually the one where we got confirmed. I think it's Netflix is where this is going uh, at some point. But back then, it jumped up to a $40 book. Now it's a $15 to $30 book, uh, 9.875 to 125 So it turned into a bit of a trap. And I say that because most of the sales are about 20 right now. Um, so about half price of that 40 that it jumped up to back then. Uh, I think this is a book with some potential, at 20, particularly at the current prices, um, so yeah, turned into a bit of a trap so far, but, uh, I think a book, if they actually make something out of it, could have some potential. Uh, next we have Mullet Cop, number one. Uh, this was an option for an animated show, and Tom and then put this on the list, even though it was only going for $8, uh, so about double cover. Uh, now it's a $1 to $8 book. Uh, there are some sales up around 8 but for the most part, it's like one, two, three plus shipping. Uh, so yeah, I'm calling this an I'll be back and a down. Uh, there's not a lot of sales. Uh, and yeah, it's going for very, very cheap. So to me, that's even though it was only $8 back then, it's still uh, cheaper now. Um, next, uh, the next two books kind of go together. Uh, first up, and this is still option related stuff. And first up is Dai Kamikaze uh, from 1987. Uh, this is hit the list because it has a preview for Speed Racer uh, in American comics. So this is the first preview of Speed Racer in American comics. Uh, and supposedly Speed Racer was getting optioned by Bad Robot for Apple TV. Supposedly we're getting a series. So that's what caused us to hit the list. Back then it was going for 20 bucks. Now it's a 10 to $20 book. Uh, so a little bit of an I'll be back again, a little bit down, but not too bad. And our next book is obviously is Speed Racer number one, which is the first full appearance of Speed Racer in American comics um, from 1987. It was going for $30 back then. Now it's a two to $30 book. Literally, it's in that whole range. Uh, 9.6 is 115 and 175. Uh, so pretty wide range on values on 9.6. No recent 9.8 sales to go off of. But yeah, this one's also down and I'll be back. Uh, both of these Speed Racer books. We'll see. I feel like done properly, this could have some potential. But uh, done like the movie? Uh, probably not. <laughs> um, all right. With that, we're moving out of option-related stuff and into covers. And we have several covers this week. First up, we have... Disturbed Dark Messiah number one. Uh, this hit the list because it's a Todd McFarlane one in 10 and one in 20. So the one in 10 is the trade dress, the one in 20 is the virgin. So they were both, uh, both were put on the list, both going for basically double ratio. So $20 for that one in 10, $40 for the one in 20. Uh, now the one in 10 is five to 15. The one in 20 is 25 to 30. So basically following the rules of the ratio, they only made it to double. They ended up around ratio to slightly above. Um, 9.8 on this one. There's only been three non-signed sales recently. Uh, trade dress 25 plus shipping 90. Uh, and then the, the Virgin went for 150. So yeah, this is definitely a down and I'll be back all over this particular cover. Uh, the next two covers are also McFarlane covers, but they're 
kind of the same. Uh, we have Department of Truth number 18, the Todd McFarlane 1 in 100. Uh, back then, this 1 in 100 was going for 175, 200, so not quite double, but we've talked about before, 1 in 100 don't qual follow the rules that you have for like a 1 in 10, a 1 in 25, or even a 1 in 50. Uh, they usually just don't go as high. Um, I mean, they go high. They go higher in total value, but they don't go as high relative to the the ratio number, I should say. Uh, but this one, this one in 100 is now back around ratio at 1 to 125. There was a single 9.8 sale for 250. But yeah, it turned into about a pretty much a trap. It's basically half price of what it was uh, back then at release. Uh, next, we have Department of Truth number 18, the Todd McFarlane Con exclusive foil variant. So this was at Megacon. And I think something else as well, but at least potentially only at MegaCon. Uh, raw copies were 160 to 200 back then. Uh, now they're 60 to 90. Uh, 9.8 going for 70 to 90. So this is marginally getting toward dumpster fire territory, but definitely a trap. Um, yeah. Two covers people enjoyed for McFarlane, but they definitely did not hold up very well, at least this year. Um, next, we have Something is Killing the Children, number 21, the Tyler Kirkham. I believe this is a whatnot exclusive. I could be wrong on that, but I believe it is. Um, it's going for raw copies of this. We're going for one for around 100 bucks back then. Now it's a 30 to $50 book, 9.8 going for 90, but that's only one sale. So this is definitely a trap. And really all of these later, Basically, from 15 on or 16 on, uh, Something is Killing Children books have not held. Um, those early books are still doing pretty well, although I think they're all down a little bit just with the general market trend down. But um, these later books and covers have not held up at all. Um, I have not quite read this section of the story yet. I have the trade. I just haven't got a chance to get to it. But looking forward to continuing to read it. But I just... Not quite holding the value it did because the print numbers are up and there's more people buying them up front. Uh, next, we have New Mutants, number 25. Uh, this was on the list last week. Uh, and this is the Art Germ 1 in 50 with the trade dress. And at this point, it was averaging around 65, according to Tom. It also switched lists. So sometimes you have to, the way CBSI talks about values versus Tom, sometimes they don't exactly match. Um, but this was going for 65 back then. Last week when we talked about it, we were talking about it as an, this one in 50 is an 80 to $100 book. Um, so almost double ratio. By this point, it was already down to 65, I guess, at least according to Tom and them. Uh, now it's a 40 to $100 book. So this has been pretty steady in an I'll be back. Whereas last week we talked about it as kind of a down in an I'll be back. But um, 9.8, interestingly enough, are overlapping with the raw sales. 70 to 125 on a 9.8. Uh, gorgeous art germ cover, particularly if you're a big fan of the Goblin Queen. But, um, yeah, I would probably go for one of those low-value 9.8s if I was a slab collector, at least. Uh, next, our last cover of the week is also a repeat from last week, and it's Catwoman number 43, the Sozomaki 1 in 25. So last week when we talked about it, it was like a $60, $75 book, going for round, right at triple ratio, uh... And it had kind of held its own at that rate. But by the second week, it was up to 175. So it had more than doubled from the first week to the second week in value. And yeah, it did not hold that. It's now, like I said, a $40 to $100 book for raw sales. 9.8 going 120 to 200. Uh, so you can get 9.8 for less than those raws were going for back then. Uh, so this one definitely turned into a trap in week two. This has happened quite often is you'll get a book that does pretty well in week one on these ratios, uh, and then has a huge jump in week two, and it ends up closer to that week one value than the week two, where you, if you got it week one, you did okay, but if you waited a week two, then yeah, you ended up walking into a trap. Um, all right, with that, we're moving out of covers, and we have one DC movie-related book, and that is Infinite Crisis number five. First appearance of Jaime Reyes as the Blue Beetle. Um, this is the Jim Lee cover we're talking about. Back then, it was going for sixty bucks. Uh, Nine point eight was three to four hundred. In the aftermath of some set photos being released to the internet, uh, now it's a twenty to sixty dollar book. Uh, Nine point eight to one twenty five to two hundred. So this has definitely turned into a trap. I believe as of right now, we're still getting this movie, um, but this is one of the projects they're at least still claiming. But with all the up 
upheaval at Warner Brothers. Who knows if we'll ever actually even get this movie. We didn't get Batgirl. Um, who knows if we'll get this one. Uh, all right. The rest of the list, uh, what, two, four, six, seven, six books, I guess. Well, almost the rest of the list. The next six books are all MCU-related. MCU uh, first up, we have Clandestine number two, uh, the first appearance, full appearance of Adam Destin, and this was rumors of Miss Marvel, and we got a version of the Clandestine in Miss Marvel, but not really the comic, true to the comics. They definitely revamped them completely. Uh, back then, though, it was only going for $5. It's one of those, there was a lot of sales, is why Tom and I put it on the list. Um, now, it's a 2 to $10 book, so you can say it's steady and then I'll be back, or steady and worth it. Um, anything this low in value, I tend to like, just put it as an I'll be back, because there was no reason to really chase it back then. Uh, with that, uh, we got a whole bunch of Thor-related books, because we were just a couple weeks out from the movie at this point, and we had, like, kind of the final full trailer release. Uh, and this is, first up, we have Thor, God of Thunder, number two, the first appearance of Gore. Back then, you're talking about raw copies going for around 190 9.8 going for 400, which are both down from like some of the previous spec on this book um, in 21. Now it's a 30 to $70 book for a raw copy, uh, 9.8, 125 to 175. So yeah, this is a dumpster fire. Um, it is definitely come plummeting back down, but I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, it's because the movie was crap. This is not that unusual just for any Marvel project right now. Um, the falls are bigger right now, uh, with the market just being down in general. And yeah, these books are just not holding the way they, they've never held well after the movie has come and gone, but they're holding even less. And it really don't know that it matters as much on the quality. Um, so if you're a big fan of this Jason Aaron run, you're a big fan of the character. Now's the time to go get those comics. Um, Next, we have Thor, God of Thunder, number five, the origin of gore, or at least the start of that storyline. I think it's in five and six, you get the origin. Um, back then, raw copies were 40 to 50. Now it's a 15 to $25 book. Uh, 9.8 will cost you 40 to 70. So yeah, this is another trap and another book that might be a good time to go get right now. Um, all right, the next three books are all Jane Foster related. And we have Thor number one from 2014, the first appearance of Jane as Thor, or the cameo, or however you want it. She's on the cover. She appears on the, at the end of the book. Uh, raw copies were 125 back then, 9.8 going for 280. Uh, now it's a 25 to 50 dollar book, uh, 90 to 120 on the 9.8, which is kind of where this book was. Still up a little bit from where it was when she first walked out on stage with the hammer, but yeah, it's back just above that. Um, cause I think it was about a $20 book back then, about a hundred dollar 9.8. Yeah. So it's just slightly above what it was before she ever walked out on stage with the hammer. Uh, so this is definitely another dumpster fire. Um, next we have Thor number two, which some claim is the first full appearance of Jane as Thor. Uh, raw copies back then were going for 40. 9.8 was 115 all the way up to 200. Now it's a five to twenty-five dollar book, nine point eight fifty to ninety. So another borderline dumpster fire. Both of these are kind of in the sixty percent decrease range. Both of these last two, which is enough that I'll call it a dumpster fire. But yeah, it's right on that borderline between a trap and a dumpster fire. But anyway, yeah, Jane is coming on. Uh, we will see. Potentially, we could get more Jane as Thor, but uh, I would guess, given the way it ends, we probably would get more Jane as Valkyrie if Jane returns, but we will see. Uh, next, we have What If number 10. Uh, this is the story where Jane first picks up Mjolnir for the first time in this What If alternate universe story. She becomes Thordis, is what they call her there. But this is the book that most people were chasing from 1978. Uh, back then, raw copies were averaging around 190. 9.8s were selling 1500 to 2000 and now a rock copy will cost you 25 to 80 uh, 9.8 will cost you 850 so another dumpster fire um, on this. So all of these Thor books have come crashing back down um, in the aftermath of the movie and no knowledge of whether or not we'll get these characters again. All right, finally we have a book that you guys are going to, before I put the slide up there, I'm going to do some caveats on this. Um... Every so often, CBSI will put a true, like, grail book on there because it's hitting some all-time highs. That's what's going on here. When I put down what happened over the six months, 
don't think it, this is why you should never judge like what I call something a trap or a dumpster fire. I'm really talking about the value over that period, not like the long term or the quality of the book. So for we have our last book is Amazing Fantasy 15 because it was hitting all time highs at mid grades. Uh, 4.5 went for 72k, a 5.0 went for 84k, a 5.5 hit 117. Okay, so these were going, these were hitting all-time highs uh, for some of these mid-grade books. Now, just six months later, you can basically get them all for 4.5 for 40 to 45, the last few sales, uh, 5.0, 50 to 55, um, 5.5, 55 to 65. So all of these, at these grades for this six-month period, have actually been a trap. And the reason I went on and put this on there and called it a trap is because it just wanted to demonstrate, obviously, this is a straight cash book. This is a grail of grails. This is the, probably the Silver Age book um, at this point. I think it's probably fat, past FF1 as the Silver Age book. But even a book like this has lulls, uh, which is what we're in right now. The market kind of got a little over high. The market is the overall market is adjusting here in 2022. It's causing a lull. So even though the long term trend on this book is straight up, straight cash, it's always going to be a straight cash book long term. You can still find deals and be patient and look for lulls on some of these books. Um, but honestly, you get a book like this, you had the funds to buy it. You probably just buy it because long term you're going to make out. Um, but yeah, for the six months, it's actually been a bit of a trap, which is you know just shows you that. The market's always kind of adjusting. So with that, uh, I want to thank you guys for watching and we will catch you next time.